puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. There is no item that has shown a bigger increase in sales on eBay in the coronavirus pandemic era than puzzles. And there's a few reasons for that. They're fun to do. They're intellectually stimulating. They take up a lot of time. They're a family activity that people could do together. And there's an artistic component to it. People enjoy creating it and solving the puzzle. And if you want to, if you really like the puzzle, what you could do is glue the pieces together like you see here and put them in a frame or like you see here as well. A lot of people will make a puzzle wall and it's a lot of fun, again, to just look back at those things that you made in the past with family members and stuff like that. But are you really gonna want to display a puzzle if there's a big gaping hole in the middle because a piece is missing? Forget even framing it for a moment. Are you even gonna enjoy looking at a puzzle that's outside of a frame if it's missing a piece? You know, when it's all said and done, you're just gonna really have a lot of disappointment. And if you went into the puzzle making thinking that all the puzzle pieces are gonna be there, especially if you spent a lot of time with your kids and they were really looking forward to getting it done and looking at the final project, they could really have a lot of disappointment on their faces and you would as well. So you wanna to try to come up with a way to get a replacement puzzle piece. Well, how could you do that? Well, one way, depending on the company, is you could call the company and see if they could send you a replacement piece. Uh, this is actually something that we just did with a company uh, many people know who are into puzzles, Ravensburger. Uh, they stand by their product even if it was purchased on a third-party site like Amazon or eBay. If you buy a puzzle and it was new and sealed and there's a piece missing, they will send you a replacement puzzle. And if they don't have that exact puzzle, they'll send you a different puzzle. So that's something right there that's just good and helpful uh, to know. Uh, now, another thing that's important to know is that if you purchase a brand new sealed puzzle or if you sell one, that's not 100% guarantee that all the puzzle pieces are gonna be there. It's the best shot you could get as a guarantee, but sometimes there is a manufacturer's error and a piece winds up going missing. Now you could be out of luck though if it's an old vintage puzzle or if the company doesn't exist anymore and you just can't track them down. So what do you do in that situation? Well, then you have to create a custom puzzle piece. So this video could be helpful not only to people who enjoy making uh, puzzles and creating them and had a piece missing, but it's also a good video potentially for resellers. Because as I mentioned earlier, resellers are making a lot of money uh, selling puzzles. And sometimes what people ask me is, well, what about used puzzles? Can I resell used puzzles? I know about the new ones, the brand new ones, but what about those used ones? Well, they're tough to sell unless you can prove that all the pieces are there. So what I suggest doing in that situation is actually creating the puzzle, or if you don't have time yourself, if it's a really big puzzle, you could ask people in your family to make it so they do it as a kind of fun project on the side, and you could help out here and there, of course, and then when it's done, you snap a picture of it and you put it in your listing on eBay to show that it has all of the pieces. But what if you went through that and you found that there was one piece missing. What do you do? Do you just give up? Can you not resell it? Well, if it's particularly an old vintage puzzle, there still could be a way. As you're gonna see in a moment, it's real important to make sure that you keep the box or have the box or have some way of printing out a picture of what the puzzle should look like. Uh, because there is a way and it's actually not that complicated. It really doesn't take a super long time to create your own custom puzzle piece. So let me take you into the Primetime Treasure Hunter Laboratory and uh, Mrs. Primetime, my wife, created her own custom puzzle piece. It was her first try ever doing it, and I think she did a good job overall. So uh, let's go and take you through all those steps. As you can see here, there's a lot of puzzle making going on in Primetime Treasure Headquarters as Daisy strolls by doing her nightly patrol. Uh, but what you can also see over here is that one of the puzzles that uh, my wife, Mrs. Primetime, was working on with my daughter, Little Miss Primetime, is actually missing a piece. Now the company was great and they said that they would send us a replacement puzzle, uh, but we wanna get this fixed right now and um, we wanna show you an option that you could use if the company does not provide you with a replacement puzzle. How could you complete the puzzle? After all, you did all this work 
and put something in there that's going to look nice. So let me show you the various steps. Okay, so the first step is we're going to take a piece of cardboard like this and we are going to slide it underneath the puzzle area. And what you're going to do then is you're going to trace out the piece with a pencil. Okay, as you can see here, this piece of cardboard has been slid right underneath the puzzle. And so now you could do the tracing. Uh, you could actually do it in pen or pencil. It doesn't really matter. Um, now, one thing just to keep in mind, and this is a Mrs. Primetime tip, is to not glue the puzzle before you do this step because then you won't have as much flexibility to move the uh, pieces around back and forth while you're doing your tracing and positioning the cardboard underneath. So now let's uh, take a look at what the tracing is going to look like. All right, so here you can see right here, this is just by tracing right around it. And now all you have to do is cut this piece out, but you can't use regular scissors for that. You're going to need to use an X-Acto knife. Okay, now what you can use those regular scissors for is just to cut around this so you have a nice workable piece in a concentrated area. You can focus more on it. This is the X-Acto knife. Now you have to be super careful with this because it is extremely sharp. You want to make sure you step away from the puzzle so you don't cut it by accident. Don't put this on top of the puzzle. You don't want to cut the puzzle, but you want to make sure you're working with this X-Acto self a healing mat because this will protect anything from uh, underneath of it getting damaged. So you're just going to take this and just slowly cut around the edges to get a workable piece. All right, so this is what the piece would look like when it's cut out. Uh, you do see there's a little overhang on the back there. That's because that's something from the next step we're going to show you uh, in a minute. We already completed this project, so I'm just flipping the piece around just to give you a sense of what it would look like. So a lot of people would have figured these steps out by now, but the next tricky part is how the heck do you get it to match what you see over here? Well, that's the next step, so let's take on that. Okay, so here is the missing puzzle piece from a different angle again. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to get out the cover of the puzzle from the original box, and you're gonna wanna take a picture of exactly that area where the piece is missing from. So you could see right here, it's right next to this uh, red mirror. So we want to get a, a picture right next to that red mirror. Now, when you originally print it out, keep in mind it might come out too big. Like you could see here how gigantic that mirror is compared to that. So what you want to do is just shrink it down as close to scale uh, as possible. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide this underneath uh, where the missing puzzle part is and you're going to cut around it. So you can see we already did it here with this one, but I'll just show you what it would look like if uh, we, you know, we slid something with a similar color scheme right underneath it. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the tracing that's right over this uh, piece of paper. And that's right on top of the X-Acto board because we wanna make sure, again, that nothing gets damaged. So you're just gonna take uh, the X-Acto knife, you're gonna cut around it so you get a nice, precise cut because what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna overlay that on top of that uh, piece of cardboard. And that's what's on the other side of this. So you're gonna wanna do that with uh, something like a Mod Podge glue, and you're just going to apply that with a small paintbrush like this. And then when it's all done and you've glued it, it's going to look just like this. So let me show you what it looks like once we put it into the puzzle. So look at that. It's pressed in. Could you find it? Let's zoom down on it. Now, this is just the raw version right now. It's an initial press in. And what Miss Primetime is going to do is she's just going to make some minor little adjustments just to, you know, make sure that if there's any overhang, she could trim that down a little bit more with the X-Acto knife. And then she's going to glue it. And I'm going to show you the final version of what it looks like uh, once it's glued up. So uh, pretty cool, you know, and especially from a distance, you cannot tell. I mean, there's not any kind of big, you know, gaping hole in it that was there before. So really quick, simple solution. But uh, hang on, we're gonna get this glued up and then show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. All right, so this is the completed version. As you can see uh, from far away, 
you're just not going to notice uh, that there's anything uh, wrong. You're not going to notice that there's anything missing. Now, uh, if you get a little bit closer, you can see that there is a color difference, uh, but that is probably just because of the lighting from the original picture uh, that was taken, and it could also have to do with the type of printing ink uh, that I was using. Uh, but if you could get the original picture to show up you know, exactly with this uh, same color, then just overlaying that right on top of it, uh, you shouldn't even be able to uh, to tell. But you know what? For just a first uh, attempt at this, this is the first time that Miss Primetime ever tried a project like this. I think it came out uh, really good overall. And uh, I think that all these steps are sufficient just to show you the different steps that would be involved to make that replacement piece. So there you have it. So there you go, folks. That's how you create your own custom replacement puzzle piece. If you're using one of these custom replacement puzzle pieces as a reseller, you need to make sure, of course, that you put that in the listing as a disclaimer. Take a picture of it as well so the customer knows exactly what they are getting. But they very well might pay for it if it's a really cool out of print puzzle that people can't find. Let's say it's an old kiss puzzle from the 1970s or something like that. People will still pay up for it if you made that custom piece. So uh, you could do lots of different things to enhance the quality of it. You could use a, a better paper stock than we use. For example, you could use something with a glossier finish so it comes out looking more shiny like an actual puzzle piece. Uh, you could do things to enhance the print quality of the colors that come out. Uh, so there's all sorts of things. I'm definitely welcome to hear all of your suggestions and Mrs. Primetime would as well. Uh, please make sure that you give her a shout out, give her some encouragement down below and with the like, uh, because she was even hesitant for me to even make this video and share it. Uh, but I convinced her to. I think that she uh, has really uh, a great creative side, as you've seen in some of my other videos where she did custom uh, furniture restoration. So if you want to see uh, more videos like this uh, in terms of some of the project Mrs. Primetime has done, and we could see also how we could apply it to your reselling business, let me know, and I'll definitely take that into consideration, and so will she. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like button. Real important, super duper duper important is to hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot of interesting information here on this channel, all for free, over 600 videos. Come over to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, over 17,000 members all sorts of seller support activities going on all the time. In fact, every day. And uh, also come over on my Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you all back at the next video, everyone. Take care. It's real important to make sure that you have the uh, cover. Ah!